Before we embark on a journey to gain knowledge, let us find out what is knowledge. Knowledge is the interrelations among experiences. Knowledge is the outcome of our experiences. The experiences, as defined in the first part of the series, are being impinged on the memory. The memory is storing all these experiences. And when these experiences are arranged in a logical and consistent manner in the memory, it forms a structure which we are going to call as knowledge. This will be the definition of knowledge for the purpose of this series on the path of knowledge. You already know what is an experience. It is that which is appearing. The memory will be explored and defined in more detail later in this series. But right now you can see it as an ability of the mind. You have this ability to store the experiences and recall them. You have the ability also to arrange these experiences, form relations between these experiences in a logical, consistent manner. If you want to have a more technical definition, then it is a low entropy structure found in the memory. It is meaningful. It has information. It is less random than merely the raw experience and therefore it is low entropy. A good question is why does the mind do that? It is very natural. It is also one of the abilities of the mind. It is one of its activity. This activity evolved as a survival mechanism initially because the organism needs to arrange its experiences of its surroundings. Who is the predator? What is my food? Where is the water? What happens when I jump from this tree? What happens when I touch hot rocks? Obviously, these interrelations they govern the behavior of the organism and they are very, very important for survival. And that is how they automatically evolved. And in humans, this activity, this ability has become very refined. Now we do it not only for survival, but also for understanding. We gain the knowledge for the sake of knowledge. There is a reward that Mother Nature produces when the organism knows something and puts it to use. This reward is seen as a pleasure that we get when we know something. It is a human tendency and it is found in many other animals also. The result of this tendency, this activity of arranging experiences is knowledge. Now the question is what kind of arrangements are possible of our experiences? What relations are formed in the memory? And they are as follows. So here are some examples of the kind of relations that can be formed while organizing the experiences as knowledge. Names and forms are very familiar relations. You see something, you experience something and you create a name for it. It can be objects, it can be actions, it can be very complex experiences. This is a kind of relation. And when you are asked what is this, usually you first relation that pops up in the mind is the name. You recognize the form and immediately your mind will give you a name of it. The second example is the action and the actor which answers such questions as who did this? What agency is behind the, a particular action? There can be relations of cause and effect which gives us the answers of the why questions. What caused this? How did it appear? And what will happen if I do something? If one thing happens... What will be its effect? These are the cause and effect relations. Then there are subject and object relations, which gives us the answers to the who questions. There can be a structure which neatly classifies our experiences. For example, it helps if we know different kinds of grains and which one grows in which season. So this kind of classification forms an arrangement in the memory. It is a knowledge. We can classify objects, animals, even people into groups which makes their understanding easier, their identification easier. There can be more complex structures in the memory which form the knowledge and sometimes there is no corresponding experience and these are called abstractions. So for example, in the company that you work for, you do not see an experience called company. You see buildings, you see people, you see the services they provide or the objects they produce. But this one word, one name, holds this abstract concept idea of a company. Another good 
example of abstraction is a person the person is a name given to a complex structure in the memory we also form many concepts and give it names and th- this is also knowledge for example the concept of gravity the concept of a particle in the physics and the concept of marriage and this can become really complex we can also discriminate between different experiences we know that this experience is not the other experience we can find differences and this also constitutes an organization this also makes a relation so discrimination enables us to correct our actions or take a proper action knowing what is the right action what is not the right action is discrimination knowing what is good what is not good what is ethical what is unethical what is harmful what is useful this forms the very basic knowledge we can form very complex hierarchies of knowledge also we can take a chunk of knowledge and arrange it in relation to other pieces of knowledges and that becomes a hierarchy so for example your garment is a hierarchical structure there is really nothing to experience there but in your mind there is a hierarchy that on the top is the president or the prime minister and below him are different departments and their ministers below them are the bureaucrats and even below them are different officials and peons and whatever this constitutes a hierarchical knowledge then you can go to a department and know everything about that department fully knowing that it is a part of the whole hierarchy and i am pretty sure that there will be more kinds of relations that are possible which which can, we can put under the idea of knowledge so if i missed some important kind of organization here relation here let me know but this is only to give you an idea of how the knowledge will look like in the memory and you can actually go and see it experiment on your own knowledge and you will know that there is a pattern there there is organization there there are interrelations and they can be classified like this so what we are doing here as you must have guessed by now is studying knowledge itself we are acquiring the knowledge of knowledge itself and it is um, a subject in itself there can be implications of defining knowledge in this way and first thing you will notice is that if there is no experience there is no knowledge all our knowledge is derived out of our experiences second if there is no memory there is no knowledge because these relations are stored in memory one more characteristic of knowledge is that it is logical and consistent if it becomes illogical and changes frequently we do not call it knowledge we call it ignorance we call it misunderstanding now it must be rectified it must be corrected so knowledge us- usually does not change the knowledge is not like a raw experience there is a difference between simply experiencing and converting the experience into knowledge for example a little baby is experiencing everything around him but probably has no knowledge probably his knowledge is very very limited who is my mother and this colorful thing is is my toy and so on he sees everything as we see but knows very little so you can see that this ability grows as the child grows we are not really born with full fledged ability to know from the beginning it is acquired as we grow there is something interesting about uh, the knowledge that it builds on the past knowledge the previous knowledge can be used to acquire more knowledge and builds up very quickly because inferences and deductions are possible from that which we already know even sometimes without experience we are able to infer outcomes and we can act this is called the ability to predict the knowledge gives us this very important ability to predict outcomes of our actions those who do not have knowledge they act blindly do not know what will be the outcome and that is also a learning experience actions result in experiences the experiences result in knowledge and the knowledge refines the action and the loop continues so the actions that are performed using knowledge are very effective efficient and elegant and lastly 
another interesting thing about knowledge is that knowledge itself is an experience we know the knowledge as an experience nothing else these structures in the memory when they are recalled when they are accessed they come as an experience thoughts images etc so not only we know we also know that we know and then that also gives rise to a knowledge of not knowing the experience that i don't know this is very valuable for a seeker and uh, some people strangely lack this kind of ability i'm pretty sure that there are more definitions of this word and uh, there are more implications but i leave it to you to explore them in detail now the question is what can be known and that is that is technically called knowability the answer is very simple anything that can be experienced is knowable if you don't experience it cannot be known this follows directly from the definition that the knowledge is interrelation among experiences so if there is no experience no relations can be formed about it based on knowability there are three kinds of experiences we can divide the experiences into three kinds that are the known the unknown and the unknowable known are obviously that which is already experienced which is already in the memory and uh, the relations have been formed and they are logically consistent with the existing knowledge it fits very well in the existing structure and that will be called known the unknown is that which is not yet experienced but can be experienced by suitable means and can be logically accommodated in the framework of existing knowledge that will be the unknown how do we know the unknown how do we know that there is something which needs to be known just like i said we can predict we can sense a hole in our knowledge this is our ability very important ability so on the basis of the known we can predict the unknown and we can try to find an experience which can fill this hole in knowledge and then there is this third kind which is the unknowable and it is impossible to experience or it cannot be understood in the light of existing knowledge we cannot even make any statements about it except saying that i don't know what it is remember that it is not that which can be known in future we are pretty sure that this cannot be known and that's why we put it in this category of unknowable you will get a lot of examples of the known unknown and unknowable in the coming talks so if you are interested you can go ahead and find out some examples if you are curious now some intelligent people are going to say that there can be fourth category which is that about which i don't even know that these experiences are unknown and i don't even know that they are unknowable now you can see that there is a, it implies a complete darkness those who don't know they don't know that they don't know is there such a category i am not including it here because that will be a fantasy it is it will be imaginary category you will never find an example for it anyhow if you like this kind of intellectual puzzles you can entertain that idea however it is totally useless now the most interesting out of these are the unknowns and how do we solve this problem of not knowing something and you must have guessed that the experience is the key so we try to find an experience or we try to experience it that is called an experiment if you do not know about a particular thing you try to experiment with it you are lost in a city and you don't know which road will take you to your home now you try a few things you ask around you walk around a little bit this is seeking knowledge and this is experimenting and you use your logical abilities that oh, i already went that direction now i don't need to explore that direction i need to take the other road and so on when we do it deliberately and after a lot of thinking planning and we set up the experience it will be an experiment to know a seeker deliberately experiments fully knowing that i do not know he experiments a common person does not do that a common man tries the hit and trial only when it becomes absolutely necessary for them they are not seeking knowledge they are finding solutions 
And then it also involves applying that knowledge which we painstakingly found out to our daily lives. And this applied knowledge is the technology as you very well know. There will be a category of seekers who seek knowledge only to apply it in for their survival, for, for, for making the life comfortable. They are also seekers but they have a limited goal. Their goal is survival, not the pure knowledge. It is an art. It is a very great art but it is very limited. And as many people know, technology does not require absolute knowledge. It requires enough experience about how things work and then you start using it even without knowing. You do a hit and trial and find out that a specific uh, compound extracted out of a specific plant treats a disease. Even if you don't know how it does that, you simply use it. You use that knowledge, you apply that knowledge to treat the disease. This is technology. A seeker is many steps ahead of this limited activity and he wants to know each and everything, especially the essential parts. Sometimes we take um, help of some tools, we take help of other abilities of the mind, such as imagination, predictions and the logic. And sometimes we assume answers and we check whether they are valid or not. This is called hypothesis. It is just a set of assumptions. And then we go ahead and experiment on our hypothesis. We try to see whether our assumptions hold or not. This is different from plain ignorance because we do it with the full awareness that it is an assumption. Ignorance is an assumption which is treated as true, which is treated as knowledge. When you don't know anything at all about something, about a phenomena or an experience, you don't even know where to start experimenting, hypothesis comes to rescue. It helps in, a, in designing an experiment. It helps to search for a path towards knowledge. Ultimately, the hypothesis is only a tool. It, it does not become knowledge. If we become lucky and we find evidences that support our assumptions, then we start calling it a theory. Sometimes it works so well that we assume that the theory is the truth, that the theory is the reality. Because it is so close to our observations, our experiments. Theory is a kind of knowledge which is in between hypothesis and actual knowledge. Our experiences tell us that probably this is the correct way. Probably these set of assumptions are the real ones. But it is not the truth. Theory is only a theory. Theory is just assumptions which seem to be valid. I am mentioning it because many people do not know these things. They think that the hypothesis is knowledge. Somebody has cooked up an explanation and because that person is regarded as an authority or it is written in some this or that book, it must be true. Because it, it was shown on the TV, it has to be true. <laughs> but these people lack the discrimination. They are not discerning. Especially even the intelligent people, they assume theory as knowledge. A theory is not knowledge, it is just a model. Can we assume anything? Can we form a theory which is like random? And the answer is no. The theory or hypothesis must be falsifiable to be useful. If you cannot prove it, and you cannot even disprove it, then that kind of assumption is totally useless. I'm pretty sure everybody knows these words, but I'm just mentioning them for completion. They fall under the topic of knowledge. I'm mentioning these things so that you should not misunderstand this, these set of tools as knowledge. You should not confuse them with knowledge. The knowledge is as defined. It is a real experience, not a theory, not a hypothesis, not some formula or anything. Even if it is falsifiable, it is not knowledge. And many of you must have recognized this way to find knowledge as a scientific method, which is a systematic study of all that is, everything, which involves experimentation and falsifiable theories. We do the predictions, we do the models, we do the thorough experimentation. And we also find out what is unknown. Notice that I have written existence here. Study of existence. The science involves everything, not only the physical world. 
in the science which is focused only on the physical phenomena is a special kind of science called physics now i'm mentioning it because this is a common misunderstanding among masses that the thing that the science is only about physical stuff no the science is a fundamental method on the path of knowledge you can use this method to explore any kind of phenomena not only that which is perceivable through gross senses which will be physical so physical sciences become a branch of the path of knowledge it is a specialized knowledge all the completely valid when you apply this knowledge to the survival process to our well being to make our lives happy and comfortable that will be the applied knowledge that is also known as the technology you can apply any kind of knowledge for your welfare it will it can be a knowledge of the physical world can be knowledge of this body and its the health and illnesses or it can be knowledge of the mind the technology is not limited to creating machines or playing with natural forces the technology is unlimited your knowledge is your limit a technology can be seen as a means of desire fulfillment about which we are going to have a full series how to use knowledge for fulfillment of desires your first desire is and your probably greatest desire is to survive not only to survive to do it elegantly make it an art the good thing about technology is that it works even if our knowledge is not complete even if there are unknowns just like i gave you the example of the medicines we are using fire long before people came to know what it is we are using wheels and other things long before the mechanisms the theories were laid down we are counting we are doing astronomy and all since ages so the knowledge may be incomplete and the knowledge may be in knowledge of the details but it can be effectively used sometimes whatever we know turns out to be false it turns out to be our ignorance but that does not affect the way we use it and later on we come to know the no no that was my ignorance this does not work like this it works in other way so a continuous refinement of knowledge is going on in the field of technology in the field of all sciences in the field of all knowledge actually and so sometimes i say that knowledge is only refined ignorance about which we'll talk later because this is a big subject and this is only an introduction that will kick start the path of knowledge you need to know what is knowledge what is not i mentioned technology here because many people have this kind of blind belief that uh, if a device works a technological application works it is an evidence that we know the phenomena behind it or the truth behind it no that is wrong just because we could apply it does not mean that we have the knowledge so i leave it leave it to you to find such examples and obviously there can be examples where we know everything completely or we think that we know everything completely about something and then we apply it but there is no guarantee the technology can continue but the knowledge can be replaced by better theories better models or some other hypothesis can also explain it there can be competing theories to explain the same phenomena and still the application will work so hopefully that will clear out uh, in the landscape of the knowledge this will give you a starting point because on the path of knowledge our goal is acquisition of knowledge we should know what is knowledge what is not and we should be very very clear about it there must not be any muddiness in your mind about what can be called as knowledge because if you run after something which is not knowledge that means it's a waste of time that means you failed and that is why the, this word has been defined before all others so meditate on this absorb the meaning of the word knowledge find out some examples and test this definition if you're not satisfied with it let me know and if you have a better definition most welcome to use it you should check it cross check it check it many times because this is the foundation if your if your foundation is uh, shaky if you have doubts about what is knowledge 
where it is, why it is there, and so on, then the coming episodes are not going to make any sense to you. They will be founded on a shaky foundation. So try to find out holes in this in in this explanation of knowledge. Be critical and come up with your own descriptions if you think it is lacking somewhere. So with this solid foundation under our feet, we are now ready to find out how to get the knowledge. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs> <laughs>